Come, anybody know the Lord to be holy this morning? Anybody know the Lord to be faithful? Anybody know God to be a sustainer, a provider, a shelter? Come on, we can call on all these things this morning. Come on, come on, join us in worship as we sing it. Come on, somebody lift up a sound. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You've been loyal. You've been Yeah! 
You've been faithful. You've been loyal. You've been loyal. Hallelujah, Lord. You've been loyal to me. our Savior, and we worship you today, God. Fill this place, God. Fill this place, God, with your glory. Fill this place with your presence. Fill this place with your glory. Fill this place with your presence, God. You are the King. 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 We reverence you today. We reverence you today. We reverence you today. Oh, somebody lift up a worship to the King. Worship the King. We worship the King.
just want to be with you. Just want to be wanna with be you. Where, wanna be where, wanna be where, wanna be where you just are. Wanna be wanna be where, you. wanna be where, wanna be where you just are. Wanna be with you. Just want to be Laying at your feet. Laying at your feet. Bowing before your feet. Bowing at your just feet. Wanna I want to be you. where you are. Just wanna be with you. Oh, King of Glory, King of Glory, feel this place. Feel this place. Just wanna be just with you. Just wanna be with you. Oh, God, just wanna. Just wanna be with you. Oh, King of Glory, King of Glory. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Well, praise the Lord. Well, let's get ready to just worship the Lord and our giving. Uh, we've had an incredible time of worship today. And now we want to give God our first fruit seed of the year. Yes. Did I say first fruit seed of the year? Listen, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I know for us, we did not let uh, the pandemic, COVID-19, affect the way we gave uh, in 2020. And uh, I believe the Lord has truly uh, blessed us because of that. And many of others, as you as you will hear uh, stories and testimonies later. Uh, I want to say, I believe, this is my belief, how you start a thing uh, determines how you finish a thing. In other words, how we start the year out. It's going to determine how this year ends. 2021 is going to end, end strong for you if you believe, if you'll stay faithful, if you'll stay consistent. Uh, what do you think, sweetheart? I agree. I agree. It's a principle. Yes. It's the law of consistency. And first fruit. Absolutely. That's right. The law of first fruit. And the word says that there is profit in all work. So if you work at being diligent in your giving, then and that's not only money, that's your time, that's yes. your resources, yes. everything. You know, and even when the word says, um, press down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom, is what you give. Whatever you give, there is a law of reciprocity that God has established in the earth that will serve you yes. when you're diligent and when you're, when you're um, consistent. So I do, I believe in that. And so this is a beautiful time for us to serve um, in our giving. And so if you have the Equipping Center app, you know what to do. Go to that page and all of your information is already there and it's ready to serve you. If you would like to have the app, please, um, text the word equipping app to the number 77977. Or if you'd like to just have the giving page and go straight to, to, to give without downloading the app, you can text TECG to 77977 and you can give there. In both places, you can mark your seed, whether it's a tithe or it's an offering, and you can um, designate it even as a first fruit. So I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you 
um, to start your year in trusting God with your seed. He said that he would give seed to the sower. So I encourage you to give him um, what he's given you and watch him multiply it. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Wonderful. Good morning, good morning. Happy New Year. We are so excited to be with you this first Sunday in the new year. And I know you're excited to be here. Uh, can you just say we made it? We made it through Ooh, one, of the, yes. one of the most challenging years that this country, this world have ever faced, 2020. Absolutely. But I am so excited about 2021. But let me say to you, we're going to have discussions today to talk about what God did for us through 2020. You know, uh, one of my one of the scriptures that jump out at me is uh, uh, what Satan, what the enemy may have meant for bad. God turned it around for our good. We're going to hear how God just turned some things around for our good. So I want to invite you in. I want you to invite others in. Feel free. We would love for you to do a watch party today. Uh, tag, like, share, comment. comment. You know, Pastor D, we finished the year strong last, last Sunday. Uh, I saw probably more comments than I've seen in a long time. Yes. We were somewhere around 100 comments. We love it when you all talk back to us. Talk to each other. And so we're excited about today. We're going to go ahead and uh, just open up in prayer. We've had just an incredible time of worship. And now we're going to open up in prayer. And then we'll get this discussion started. Amen. 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 So, Father, we just thank you for this day. Lord, a day that you have made, a year, Lord, that you have made, that we can rejoice and be glad. Lord, we thank you for the listeners, Lord, that have joined in today, Lord. Let he that has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord will say to the church. And Lord, we just thank you for each person, Lord, that was shared uh, this morning, Lord, that was shared their stories, their testimonies, Lord. And Lord, even, Lord, just what God is saying uh, to them and how God is using them. So, Lord, we just give you praise in advance, Lord, that this is just gonna, going to be an anointed time, Lord, where we, where we give you the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. So, Pastor D, why don't you introduce our special guest and tell us what we're talking about today. Yes. So, Happy New Year, everyone. I am so excited to begin this year talking about the amazing things that God did in 2020. I would say that everyone could recite all of the negative news and all the negative things and the challenges that were happening, but we want to begin this year giving God thanks and glory, the glory for the things that he created, that he birthed in the families here at TEC, um, things that people were talking about for years or wanting to do for years, and this, the shutdown actually worked for our good. Yes. And so we are going to introduce the first couple, not really introduce, we're all family, but we're going to introduce Clark Enterprises. Yes, Maurice and Nina Clark. Let's give them a hand. So I'm just gonna open it up. Philippians 2.13 tells us, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. My goodness, what did God do for you all in 2020? Tell the good news. Oh my goodness, God really, he birthed Clark Enterprises and a dream, a desire in my heart, but of course we're one. Yes. So, but in my heart, I have desired for over 20 years of wanting to um, have a clothing boutique where God can help. I can help women fulfill their purpose and look good doing it. Come on. Now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so he did that. Yes. yes. He did that yes. even in the midst of everything that went on in 2020. Yes. Everything. Yes. 
Amen. Yes. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise What's the Lord. name of the boutique? The boutique is House of Nina Anine. House of Nina Anine. I love yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Maurice, tell us about it. Well, um, he birthed in me. I mean, he, well, let me put it like this. I have gifts within myself to where I don't use them a lot. And I'm very good with my hands. And um, I'm a handy person. Yes. Right. But not only that, me and my wife both are stylists. And yes. And I'm not gonna give the date, but it's coming up. Come on now. Uh, the men styling is coming. Yes, sir. To tuition too. Yes, sir. So, but it has really been a blessing. And not only that, um, he's allowed me to uh, get back into the workforce a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go into my little story of 2020, but God has really, really been there. I mean, he, we've been standing on our word and standing in faith. I mean, he has really, really did that thing. Amen. So what are some scriptures that you guys have stood on to get you through 2020? Yes. Oh. We had to continue to stand on, first off, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Absolutely. We had to stand on that knowing that, first of all, God does not want to harm us. Oh, ever. Okay. Ever. Ever, no matter what it looks like, right. he yes. does not want to harm us. Yes, he has a plan for us. Yes, yes, the future. Yes, and hope. Yes. So knowing that we could stand on that and continue to, you know, write the vision, mm -hmm. write the vision, because sometimes the vision gets blurred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the vision gets blurred, but you know what? The word never gets blurred. Awesome. And awesome. so to stand on that and know that we could, we wrote the vision, made it plain, and God opened doors. Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How did you how did you move through 2020 with the pandemic, with the masks, with the shutdowns and all of those things? How did you continue to build while everything was shut down? Well, I mean, you know, we, we follow, follow protocol, you know, the di social distancing, wearing our masks, hand sanitizer and everything. But I mean, we just, we just, we're just being careful. Yeah. We were really yeah. being careful. We didn't, we didn't travel a lot. We didn't travel at all. Right. We didn't go a whole lot of places. So how did that help you build your business? How did it help you? It, it helped us build to the point where it allowed us the time yes. to focus, mm -hmm. the time to come together, whereas before we were going, we were moving, yes. you know, it seemed like time was getting away from us. Mm -hmm. but we were able, first of all, God gave us time back with each other. Mm -hmm. All right now, yes. all right. Amen. Yes. Gave us time back with each other. And then on top of that, he gave us time to sit down and say, okay, God, what is our next? What is it for us to do even in this time, mm -hmm. what we are going through. And that mm -hmm. gave us the time to write the vision. Beautiful, beautiful. To write the vision and go back and, and, and look at the vision. Yes, 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 to revisit. Yeah. Now, what about the health business, health and wellness business that you all do together? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. We love it. Love it. Yes. Uh, the products are awesome. Um, we're still, we're still soaring with it. Um, you know, a lot of it was virtual. You know, we do a lot of virtual. We Absolutely. Didn't have, you know, before this happened, we normally have uh, house parties, mm -hmm. which we can invite people come in and, and we actually show them what, exactly what we do. But because of the pandemic, you know, we had to social distance. I said, so we did it virtual. And it has, it, it just like if we, they were sitting right in front of us. And yes. Like so it has still continued to soar. And, and it just, it's just been amazing. It's just been amazing. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, we are so grateful for the Clarks. Yes. So grateful for all mm. that God has birthed in them in 2020. Yes. Man, I think I heard three businesses operating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So <clears throat> in the final half a minute or so, how would you encourage someone in 2021 to take that step into entrepreneurship? We would like to encourage someone to believe God, trust God, stand on God's word, and know that, again, he has a plan for yes. you. And take that leap of faith. Just jump. 
Just love jump. It. Love yes. it. Just jump. Yes. Jump. Amen. Love it. Just jump. <laughs> Just jump. Amen. Beautiful. Well, you heard it. Let's give it up for the Clarks. Yes. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Uh, we're back. And on this set, we have none other than the psalmist, uh, Michelle. Uh, those of you that attend uh, the equipment center, you know this lady right here. I'm going to say real fast. I am a night person, a night, late night person. And uh, I recently discovered that uh, Michelle is a late night person too. So <laughs> between me, her, and Dexter, we're texting each other. I found two people that I could text late at night. But I'm excited about you and what you are going to share uh, this morning. So Pastor D, uh, I'll give it back to you. Yes, so Michelle is a new author. Yes! <laughs> Woo! She said, not only do I have something to sing, I have something to say. And this is her beautiful book. Praise the Lord. Hope After Divorce. Praise wow. the Lord. Wow, I am so looking forward to reading this. Quotes, encouragement, and hope. My goodness, the word says that hope does not disappoint. Mm. So I love that you are awakening hope in people whose lives may have taken a disappointing turn and they can look to God, they can look to, to friends, they can look to now an author yes. and get hope from your life. Oh, glory to God. Yes, yes. How would you like to begin? There's so many ways we could go, but I'm going to open it up. How would you like to begin to share how God birthed this book in 2020? God birthed this book actually from pastor speaking over uh, my life that this was the time for me to do this. And Amen. I, I didn't take it, want to take it lightly. And so I honor you, Pastor, for wow. helping birth this into the earth. These were the words I needed to hear when I went through my separation and divorce. And yes. so God mm -hmm. um, just gave me the idea to share with people mm -hmm. on the platform um, called Instagram, um, <clears throat> which you can find me at Hope After Divorce. But this is where this book was birthed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was reading her Instagram posts and I said, man, what she is posting on in Instagram concerning uh, divorce, life after divorce, and just speaking hope, I said, Michelle, you have got to write a book. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your obedience. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly what that is. Amen. So um, I'm just going to pick a, a chapter um, on healing. What can you say? on healing to those that are listening? I can say it's a process. Um, it's not linear, it's messy, it's complicated, but it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And Beautiful. there's also a part in there where um, I talk about healing, not just for you, but for your children's children. There are things that um, we have not dealt with that um, if we don't deal with them, they're gonna be passed on to, from generation to generation. And so mm -hmm. it's important for us um, in any area of our lives to seek complete healing because mm -hmm. it can break curses and chains. Mm -hmm. and, and yes. And, and set, you know, set our children's children wow. free. So yes. healing is so important, especially when you're walking through um, separation or divorce. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, let me say this, and especially mm -hmm. if you intend to go into another relationship, um, you do not want to that carry right the there. baggage of hurt into another relationship. So before we jump into another relationship, let's make sure that we're healed. Yes. yes. I've got a, another post on Instagram that says dating while wounded can be devastating. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of times when we when we don't heal those wounds, we start bleeding My on Lord. the other people. Yes. And, and so, yeah, healing is so yes. important. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they were the wrong person. Right. You just weren't prepared. Yes. You weren't prepared for that person yes. or for that relationship. Yes. Man, that's so good. Yes. That's so good. Now, what about communication? Because one thing the pandemic tried to do was, I won't say that, one of the effects of the pandemic was separation. My goodness, especially for our TEC family, we are loving and hugging and touching Come and gathering and on. all of those things. Man, it's hard to even close <laughs> the church down after service because we hang out the yeah. whole time. Yes. Well, an hour or two. Oh yeah. my goodness. Uh, it's so funny. I remember one day we were hanging out and it was, I don't know, an hour and a half after church. <laughs> and Arisa looked around. She said, what's wrong with us? <laughs> <laughs> See, we love each other. Yes, so, true. in that, how 
did you communicate? How did you um, take that, that time that we have and shift your communication to still reach people in social media? The, the pandemic was a blessing to me. And I mean, 2020 has been amazingly good to me. Yes. Amen. God has been so good yes. to me. Amen. I was able yes. to just slow down and just really kind of close things out and listen and hear um, the voice of God. And he gave me uh, different opportunities to communicate. I've done interviews. I've done podcasts. Yes. He has literally done more in the past few months for me than I ever expected. And I'm not just saying that. And so I've just taken the time to um, be open and offer the communication. I have people from all over the world that reach Woo! out Come and say, now. you know, the posts have helped them during the darkest times of their lives. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Yes, yes. So here we are. What would um, you like to see God do with this book? I just want to see people free. I want to see people free. Um, Revelation 12, 11, 10 and 11 talks about how um, um, the accuser of, of the brethren, All right. you know, he does his thing, but the way they overcame it, it was by the word, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Go ahead now. This book, those Instagram posts and all the other things mm -hmm. that God has, I'm not putting a lid on God. Whatever he wants to Come do with now. it, I'm open. But Ooh. this is how I've overcome the shame, the embarrassment, because right. a lot of people don't want right. to talk about divorce, right. especially when you're in church. It's a, you know, it's the D word. Um, but yeah. there is a freedom when you share what you've overcome. There's yes. a freedom yes. when you share what God has brought you yes. through. And so, yes. yes, that's the hope that I stand on. Yes. My goodness. So I'm just going to open this up. It says, and I want you to talk about this. You can't heal if you keep pretending you're not hurt. Yes. Yes, it, it's so important just Ooh, to be real. Look, God already knows. I knew I was going to get to use this. <laughs> the mask. Yes. The mask. Yes. Pretending I'm good. Yes. I'm good. Yes. My and it's okay. Goodness. It's okay to say that you're not okay. It's okay to say that you're hurting, that you that you that you need help. It's okay to get counseling. It's okay to get therapy. <laughs> Pastor talked about it Sunday. It's okay to reach out when you need help. Um, but if you don't, if you I, you God can't fix what you don't face. Mm -hmm. Yes. So just be real, be open and honest. He's there, he's standing, he's waiting, and he's ready to heal us. Oh my goodness, yeah. yes. And he's already done the work. Yes, he's already done the work. He's already done the work. One of the things that I pray when I pray for people to have healing manifest in their body is that the work that was already done for us yeah. would be manifested, yeah. that God doesn't have to do another thing. It's already done. We just have to receive. Actually, we obtained it in salvation. Mm. Yes. So then we just have to walk in it. Yes. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. So I want you to look at the camera. Man, there's so many people out there that are that are connecting with, with your heart, your book right now. And before, I just want to say, um, I'm so proud of you. Oh, Lord God, thank we you. We are so proud of yes. you. Yes. Um, and so I just want you to speak to them and encourage them in, in their lives, and where they are. Get them through, get them through this rough spot. And tell us where to find you. Uh, you know, how, how do we get in touch with you? How do we follow you? Let, let us know that as well. Amen. Thank you again for this opportunity. You can go on Instagram and type in Hope After Divorce. You'll find me there. Um, also, my website is Michelle Lester, Michelle with an E. Um, dot com. But I just want to say one of my one of my favorite quotes that I say is perhaps divorce was the hardest thing you've ever had to survive. But here you are surviving it one heartbeat at a time. Um, Yes, it can be devastating. It can be difficult. It can be something that you never thought you'd experience. And I do want to say I don't advocate divorce. I don't because it, it's it's hard. It's a breaking. It's a it's a divorcing. It's a it's a separation of families. But if you find yourself in that place, know that God is able to bring you out even better, even stronger, even wiser than you were when you went in it. So He can take your beauty for ashes. He can take your mourning and turn it into joy. I am a witness that there is hope even after this. Wonderful, Michelle, my goodness. Incredible, incredible. Here's the book. Please look for it. Michelle Luster, that's Michelle, M-E-C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. <laughs> Hope after divorce. Wow. Thank you. Amen. Did you know that more businesses are created during a recession than any other time? That is what we are celebrating today. Today, we are celebrating the great things that happened in 2020 
here at the Equipping Center. Yes, yes. I actually did a little research. These are some companies you may recognize that started during a recession. Perhaps you've heard of Procter & Gamble. Perhaps you've heard of IBM. Perhaps you've heard of GE. Perhaps you've heard of General Motors. Perhaps you've heard of FedEx. Perhaps you've stayed in a Hyatt. Perhaps you've eaten in an IHOP. Perhaps you own a Microsoft product. Perhaps you've watched CNN. All of these companies were started during an economic downturn. In fact, a few of them were um, started during a time that was called the panic. Wow. While everyone else was panicking, God was moving in the hearts of people to begin massive enterprises. And I believe he has done that same thing in 2020. So now our next person that we're going to introduce is yet another author that has been birthed at the Equipping Center. Yeah. <laughs> her name is Colette Williams, but we call her... Coco. Coco. <laughs> Coco has this beautiful book. Oh my goodness. Because I'm a princess. And we're going to let Coco tell us about this beautiful princess. So, yes, this is my baby. My baby that has taken years to birth, but glory to God, I did birth her. <laughs> um, the star character is Princess Michelle. Um, yes. Michelle is actually my middle name, and it means who is like God. Um, princess Amen. Michelle is not a princess because she lives in a castle, um, because she wears the frilly dresses and has servants. Princess is Michelle is a princess because she knows who she is and who she is. Yes. She is a daughter of the Most High God um, through the, our heritage in Christ. Yes. Um, the King of Kings. And that's why she is a princess, because she is a daughter of the Most High God. And so Princess Michelle um, teaches young girls and young boys what it means to be a princess, what it means to embrace your royal heritage in Christ, mm -hmm. attributes of a true princess, of a true royal child. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I got to tell you, there's been some uh, preaching going on here today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we're not meet, missing preaching this morning. I got to yes, tell you that. Yes, <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Oftentimes when we, when we write, when we journal, when the Lord gives <laughs> us a, um, a desire to write a book, is something that has already happened in our lives or something we're living through or living out. How has Princess Michelle helped you live out your life as a royal child? Princess Michelle, um, my background is an early child. Uh, I work with young children, and um, Princess Michelle just is a teacher, like me, <laughs> to young girls, uh, young children. Um, she has, I have learned um, of who I am and yes. whose I am. Um, it took some years, but that thing finally became solid within me, assured within me, the love that God has for me, um, who I am as a kingdom citizen um, of his kingdom, of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And Princess Michelle is just living that out for young children. Yes. That is beautiful. I want to share, um, I asked Colette to send me a scripture that she has stood on for this book or even just through life. And she went back, and I'll tell you, this was so beautiful. She said, I went through my 2020 archive and found some scriptures. I'll tell you, that's a habit you want to have. Mm. You want to archive some scriptures that are going to get you through yeah. when you don't have an opportunity to come to church and hear a word from the pastor. Yes. Right? right? You want to be able to pull on the word yourself. That's right. And these are so beautiful. And I don't know what translation this one is, but I really want to share this. It's Luke eleven thirteen, and then I'd love for you to speak to it. It says, if imperfect parents know how to lovingly take care of their children and give them what they need, 
how much more will the perfect heavenly father give the Holy Spirit's fullness when, the, when his children ask him? Man, if imperfect parents know how to lovingly take care of their children, how much more does our Heavenly Father, our perfect Heavenly Father, know how to give us His fullness when we ask? Yes, um, that is one of many that I hold on to um, just to keep me encouraged. And I grew up with great parents. Um, you know, yeah. I had both my mom and my dad in my life. Beautiful. Um, and they did the best they could with what they had. And even though they were good parents, how much more is my good, great is my heavenly father towards me? Yes. Um, the plans that he have for me, as Nina mentioned earlier, are plans to prosper me, to give me success and a good future and a hope. So he thinks highly of me. He thinks highly of his creation of his children. Yes. Why get what gives us any right? to think anything less than what he has already said. You if he preach. has already said great things about us, if the thoughts that he thinks about us and towards us are good and thoughts of success, we have no right, no legal right to think anything right. less than. So that is one of my uh, go-to scriptures as a great father, my great Abba, um, just to keep me encouraged when the things and the doubts of this world try to tell me otherwise. Wow. So Colette, tell us Beautiful. when will the book be ready for us to purchase? How can we follow you, um, know what you're doing, how God is using you? And, and yes. it's evident that God is using you. I, I still remember um, when God brought you to the equipment center. I've known you way before then, <laughs> yeah. but I remember you sticking your toe in the water and then you came back, <laughs> you kept coming back. And I now did. you were like just, you're just one of the pillars in the church. Oh, I see just yeah. greatness um, in you. Your future is great. And uh, how can we follow you? Okay. Uh, well, I am still building a platform. I am on uh, Facebook. My name is Colette Williams on Facebook. If you, you know, have any mutual friends or anything like that, you can find me there. Also, the book can be found on Amazon under my name, Colette M. Williams, or the title, Because I'm a Princess. Awesome. I tell you, I have so fallen in love with this little girl. <laughs> That's my I baby. Colette, I, I feel like I could come over her house and pick her up and take her for ice cream. <laughs> Not before dinner, though. Not before. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Can we bless God for this new author, yes. Colette Amen. M. Williams, because I am a princess. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Those of you that are watching this morning, uh, if you have written a book, if you have started a business and we don't know about it, yes. go ahead and write it in the comment. We want to know what you're doing as well. How, mm -hmm. I mean, what God has done for you in 2020. You know, Pastor D said more books are written. I also heard that more millionaires are birthed. That's right. During a time of pandemic. That's right. So let us know what God is doing in your life right now. We want to hear about it. So go ahead and write it in the comment so we can follow you and know what God is doing in your life. Beautiful. Man, have this not been incredible. Remember <laughs> to like, share, and especially comment. And so right now we have another special guest, someone that God has truly blessed. Mm -hmm. I have known uh, this woman of God for 25, 30 years when her children were babies, mm -hmm. when she was a drug addict. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if we're telling that story today, but we're gonna tell a story or uh, hear a story about what God is doing in Sherry's life. So I'm gonna hand it off to you, Pastor D. Oh, we're gonna hand off to Sherry because she has a beautiful testimony for 2020 uh, and her whole life, her yes. whole life. but. We're going to push into 2020. We're talking about the wonderful things that God did during the pandemic, during the time that all of the news headlines were negative. God was making positive news lines yes. in our lives. So let's give it up for Sherry Risco. Come on, go ahead and clap. Go ahead and clap. Yes. See those claps go through the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I just first, um, I want to ask God to speak through me so that I can help somebody else have hope and, and love their self. That's, 
-hmm. was one of the things I never did. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank both of my pastors. I told you before, I love you for not babying me. Mm -hmm. He made me go home, get in the Word, dig that stuff up. Yeah. That stuff was ugly, deep, dark, and very ugly. And I dug it up, and it hurt so bad. I, I'll never go back. And he had told me that. You'll never go back. He's got and I'll, I'll never go back, no matter what my struggle is. The past is behind me. Yeah. Yes. And I'm a new person who loves myself. I can walk with my head up. I got integrity. Come I on. know I'm pretty. Come yeah. on. Um, I know I'm a good person. I'm an awesome mom and an even awesome more grandmother. Yes. I'm a child of God and that's special because don't nobody loved me like he does. And Come he loves now. me. Every night I tell him, you love me through this day. Jesus. <laughs> you still love me. Yes. And um, just to have the love of God is just, you know, my story's long, dark. It's deep. It's ugly. But we're not going to go there today. Today we're going to talk about what God did for me during the pandemic. The pandemic started. God started blessing that week. <laughs> my baby girl, B.J. Roseman. Come on now. My BFF. Come on I now. I love her. <laughs> she came and picked me up and said, Mom, we going grocery shopping. Okay, because that was a regular thing. Give me a ride, give me a ride, give me a ride. Mm -hmm. She said, Mommy, you notice we passed all the stores. I said, well, where are we going shopping at? <laughs> she said, we're going to get you a car. I said, what? <laughs> she said, we're going to get you a car. I started crying. All I could do is pray, oh, but Jesus, but Jesus, but Good Jesus. Lord. Ten years, no car, no wow. license. Traded my license for drugs. They got tickets on my license. License suspended. We went and picked up a 2010 Nissan Sentra with 61,000 miles on it. That's a brand new car, That's a new I'm car. telling you. That's yeah. a new car. Brand new car. <laughs> and um, she, my baby girl bought it for me. I could not get custody of my two grandsons, which wow. I go to court. Wow. January 20th for full custody, this girl. Yes. I did it. Three years DSSK. Yes, I won. <laughs> I did. I got them babies, which are teenagers. <laughs> And boys, I raised girls. Yeah. Yes. But they wouldn't want to be nowhere else. Yeah. They call me honey for a reason, because I'm good to them. Yeah. Good to them boys. Um, mm. And then, you know, I got the car. I'm trying to just thank my mind's everywhere. I just want to praise God. My life has changed. I walked in this church a mess. I've been in and out, and pastor, like, you... You divorce me? No, I never will. <laughs> I love you because I've never known two people who love the Lord. I've never felt that. And I've been in church, and you know, for years. And for you not to pet me, that, that at first I was like, he ain't going to buy me a car, pay my bills. No, he's not. Mm -hmm. You dig and you find out your way and what God yeah. wants for you. Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate that. And I'm I've told now. him that. I love y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all are pure hearts. There's nothing I see nothing dirty. It's just pure love. And I've never experienced that. Mm. Wow. And as I was digging up stuff, it was so painful. It was like birthing a baby. It really was. And then self-pity. I love that friend. Mm. That was my friend that got me my way. Mm. Ooh. I'm going I'm to say I thank Miss Jazz and her prayer team because they laid me out on that floor. And they oh worked on me. I was soaking wet with oil. Worked on me. Until them demons came out, and it was ugly. Miss mm. Jazz, I'm sorry every time you said Jesus loves you, I growled at you, but it wasn't <laughs> me. <laughs> it was them demons in me, and once I got them off, you know, I don't, I don't worry. That's right. I don't stress. Yes. I'm free. Because there's freedom. Yes, yes. I hold my yes. head up. I've never done that. I wear my scars beautifully. Yes. You know, that shows me that, you know, I'm beautiful with my scars because I had a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Anybody knows me knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with my kids. I've never had that because That's I beautiful. was an addict. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. And they let me keep their children. Lord, their children won't go home. <laughs> I got five of them over there right now. Yeah. And um, 
God has just blessed me and made a way, you know. It got me my disability. Um, it's been provided food, year. you know. I mean, um, just provided me to have a way to pay my insurance because law don't trade your license. I insurance 200 a month for tag, but it's there's a way. And he just keeps on providing. We've ate every day, me and the boys. We've paid our bills. In six months, I will be debt-free. Yes. Do power. He yes. might natural gas and rent. Yeah. And I pay, they, you know, God worked that out too. Yeah. Where I was able to make payments. And yes. it's just, God is just amazing. Everywhere I go, I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I walk in, I feel like, you know, I'm somebody. I can yes. look you in the eyes. I've yes. never looked anybody in the eyes. Yes. I'm a good person and God's healed me. Your truth is so beautiful, Sherry. Um, the one thing that I just think is amazing, and I say this often, we say this often, when you have someone that doesn't hide behind shame or won't give God glory because of shame, when you have someone that'll throw shame away and reproach away and just give God everything yes. they are, there is absolutely nothing that they won't do for God. There yes. is nothing mm. that God cannot do wow. yes. with that person. Yes. You know, even somebody that's had a really difficult time, you can't threaten them with a hard time. They've already been oh, yeah. to the bottom. They know what it looks mm. like. They know everybody there and they've made it back. So mm. you can't threaten them. You can't uh, manipulate them. They know what God has done for them. Mm-hmm. And Sherry, I just love your freedom. I love your freedom. I love being free. I've never yes. been free. I was full of bondage from childhood and it just carried on mm. and just words that were spoken me being b- broken and to have my family to love me and trust me and to get me a car I didn't get the car my BJ Roseman got me that car that's beautiful and um for her to trust me with a car and with her children because for years I couldn't have anything and the Lord blessed her to bless you? Yes, he did. He blesses he us did. to be a blessing. He did. Mm-hmm. And now I can be a blessing and encouragement to women. I want to tell anybody that they're struggling with any addiction, self-esteem, problems, just if you let God in, the, mm-hmm. the healing is so real. And it's what I got now I've never had. Mm-hmm. And what I want to share to people is, that there's a way, there's a way out of whatever, because I was in the whatever category. My Lord. To be able for them to call me and tell me, hey, we, we want you to come tonight. Nobody with any kind of integrity like that calls me. Mm-hmm. And tell me, I was just so blessed that I didn't have time to be nervous. Well, but like, you know, I got to get myself together and we got to show up on time. Yeah. And well, I you are a woman of integrity. The word says that the old man is dead. Yes. And the new man is here. And now we walk in the newness of that life. Yes. It is there. God is rewriting your story. Yes. Everything that you remember from before, you call it that mm. that dark and, and dirty and ugly part. Man, he is giving you beauty for ashes. Yes. yes. He is giving you the oil of gladness for mourning. Yes. And it's showing up. It's yes. on you. The yes. glow oh, is there. You. The beauty yes. is there. Really? Yes, absolutely. Mm. And yes. so I know. I want to <laughs> encourage you. Absolutely. I want to encourage you um, to know that that ugly part is is day by day fading yeah, away. Yeah, there's less gone, and less I gone. think about it. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like removed out my mind and I'm starting to renew like childhood yes. memories and yes. like don't think on the bad stuff. It, yeah. it's, it's no longer it's, your identity. Yeah, that's mm. not who I am. You have a new identity in it's Christ. It's a new me, and I love it. Yes. I love y'all. Can we celebrate Sherry Risco? We love you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are back again. And yes. Man, I got to tell you, we have uh, an anointed voice that's going to share with us what God is doing in her life. Uh, we've watched her grow um, as a single yes. mother, watched her grow as a as a young woman for many years, 10, 12, 15 years. I don't know how long, but I can tell you the hand of God is on her life. And uh, I'm just going to pass it off to Deanna because there's so much I can say about her. And I want because for the sake of time. Yes. So 
We are talking about what God has done during 2020, what he birthed in 2020, what he created in 2020. And I tell you, this one is really unique and very close to my heart. I tell you, um, Jazz is one of my spiritual daughters that has for years called, text, asked questions, read scriptures. What does this mean? I was studying this and I love that. I love, you guys know, I love digging in the word and I love um, discovering new truths. And so it's beautiful to see her fall in love with the word for herself. She has um, a beautiful mom that um, the Lord gave her, Miss Grace, who gave her a great foundation. And then the Lord blessed me to be a part of that foundation building. And so now we have this beautiful woman of God that loves the word and wants to share it with others, not share opinions, but to study it and to share the real truth. And so God took that to a new level during the pandemic. Let's welcome Miss Jasmine Reese. Amen. Tell us all about it, Jasmine. Amen. You know, you you brought that up, and I just had wanted to share this this just tit little thing um, about our connection um, because I did have a great foundation, and I never thought I would call anybody else mom. And my mother, um, the, the face of my mother, which I, I know it's the Lord when I see her in the dreams, but I know it was God. But in a dream, led me to you, and and oh. and told and it gave me money and told me to give it to you and there was an exchange that took place but she sent in the dream she sent me to you and I was Whoa. I was clear on what who you were to me and oh so goodness. in that relationship and so um I just wanted to to share that because nothing that God does is just you don't just say oh I want you to be God is strategic right. about that. Right. And yes, so, um, yes. and I'm, and I'm grateful to God for that. So, um, thank you. God ordained that thing. And Amen. Made it clear. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, and during the pandemic, um, probably around April, my family, uh, most of my family is in New York city. So they were hit really hard. Mm -hmm. They were hit hard and they were seeing bodies dropping like, like crazy. They were seeing trucks filled with bodies and they were really afraid you know and a lot of them they knew the lord but they didn't have a relationship and they didn't know him in a way that they were that they had confidence to know that they were okay yes and so i was talking to one with one of my cousins one day and she was just saying you know i told her about um the equipment center prayer line and she was just talking and she said we need a prayer line can we have a prayer line the family where we can call in i said yes we can i'll get the number i'll put it together and we started a prayer line a family prayer line yes every two how many people would love to have that a Family prayer line. Yes. Man. My goodness. It was amazing. And we started out, and it was a little rocky. You know, people were getting on. Hey, what's up? You know, they had a few words sliding. <laughs> and so, yeah, and, and we had those cousins say, it's a prayer line. You know? <laughs> you know, like, they're like, oh, I forgot. So, you know, we, we had to get adjusted. But, you know, it was never about judgment. The fact that, that we That's were right. coming together, man, it was just beautiful. And then it, it went from prayer to salvation calls. And people getting saved. We've had over 50 family members to be <laughs> saved. Oh, my God. Or, or more. Because my God. What ended up happening was they started inviting their coworkers, their friends, their wow. neighbors. And they started coming on. And then they were inviting their parents. And, and we next thing you know, we were calling people. We, I, I was talking to this guy in jail. Never met him before. Can you pray for me? <laughs> and he was like, they won't let me out. He's out. Oh, out of jail. He is out of jump jail. out of his chair. <laughs> he is what? out. They would not release him. They tried to, it was his time to be released. And they kept telling him, he, they kept trying to keep him and just doing some underhanded things or whatever, according to what they were saying. And he is out now. And I was able to pray with him weekly with his wife or either him. And he was, and I looked on Facebook. I didn't even know. And I said, wait a minute. This is the guy we've been praying for. Nobody <laughs> even said anything, but God released them. And it went from, it went from a prayer line to salvation call to a, now a weekly Bible study on Thursday. So we still pray on Tuesday night mm -hmm. and we have a, um, what we call life support Bible study on My Thursday. God. Life support. Life support. And God gave us that name. And it was, it, you know, we have probably about 40 to 50 people on a call on Tuesday. But on Thursday, we have maybe about 20. 
those are the people that are really hungry. Want to dig, yes. They, want to dig. they kept calling and asking me questions like I did you. Yes. And I still call you. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I'll get back to you on that. Let me <laughs> let me call my source. <laughs> so um, but um and we dig and we go in the word and it went from a study in the word to now a few of them are teaching on Thursday night. My God, you're, my God. You're talking about never taught the word, never probably picked up the Bible on the regular. They're teaching. And so God is just pulling on their gifts to pray yes. and pulling on their gifts to, and now they're developing and, and, and what we, TEC, we have extended yes. that, that mission yes. is they're developing, um, discovering who they are developing and they'll be deploying and yes. they're, they're yes. doing that. And so yes. there's just an, and they, they, they call us y'all, their pastors too. Yes. They're, they're an extension. We're honored. <laughs> yes. We're honored. Yes. They, TEC <laughs> New York. Yes. We're coming. We're coming. Coming. <laughs> yes, yes. Coming so, they'll say, I see your pastor on TV. I see, and, you know, and so they really, and they, they really respect and honor the word. And so now it's just an ongoing thing. And we're preparing for 2021 and what we're going to do. And now they're about to embark on their first fast. Uh, us Whoa. fasting as a family. Never, never wow. have, have we done that. I tell you, <clears throat> that's Ephesians 3.20. Wow. Yes. yes. More than you could ever ask or think God is doing in your family through your obedience to, to simply pray, mm. to, to pray. simply pray. So when you look back, my God, my God, do that. <laughs> you know, when you look back and you see what God has done for you, and now you begin to see a part of the reason why. Why? He used you to cast that hook into your family in New York mm -hmm. during a very dark time. And where there were dead bodies all around, he began to raise them My to God. new life. Yes. My yes. Lord. Yes. Look into the camera and encourage your family that will be watching and others that are yet to be to be saved. Amen. I just want to encourage you that whatever was meant for evil, God will turn it around for yes. your good. God has a plan. He has a plan for your life. God didn't just send you here to wonder and try to figure out why am I here? There is a reason why you're here. God loves you. And God is for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've gone. God has a plan for your life. And as long as you have breath in your body, mm -hmm. chaos can be all around you. Bodies can be dropping on every side. Mm -hmm. God has a plan for you. And he loves you. And mm -hmm. so I just want to tell you right now, and if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, that is your step one. Get to know him. Start out with prayer. Even some of us that are already saved, if you have family members that you've been praying for, get, get a prayer line. Just offer them prayer mm. and don't give up on them. Don't look at them. Don't shame them. Believe mm -hmm. that God has a plan for their life, just like he has for you. So I just want to encourage you to just keep pushing and that no matter what's going on around you, if you still have breath, God has a plan for you. Whew. Last thing, uh, tell us how we can join in on that Thursday night prayer. Yes. What yes. do we need to do? Amen. Yes. Yeah, so the, the, um, the Thursday night prayer is the phone number for that is 720-650-3030. And that's on, on Tuesday night. And we have a Zoom. Our, our Zoom is on Thursday. And that's more if you want, if you want, just reach out to us. Um, you can, I'm on Facebook, Jasmine Tenille Reese. And I'm always at the Equipment Center. You can find me somewhere in there. <laughs> well, if you're watching, we're going to put that information in the comment. Yes. So go ahead and copy that comment. And join in on Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. 8, p 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Awesome. <laughs> hello, hello. Another amazing 2020 story for you. We have with us Tiffany Davidson Parker. You guys, this one right here. Oh, my goodness. Did you call it by the whole name? I, I didn't do the middle name. Okay, no but. middle name. All right. You gave the middle name, then she was in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, oh, my goodness. Come and hear what the Lord has done. Tiffany, what an honor oh, to have you on set today. 
to tell of the amazing things that God has done in your family and in your life and just so many beautiful things. My goodness, this is another one that'll call and dig and read the word and pray. And man, I love it. I've enjoyed what God has done um, in our in our relationship, yes. in your life. It's been such a short time, you know, very short time. But man, it's a it's a lifetime in it. Yes. And so um, please share um, what has happened in uh, 20. What happened in 2020, 2020. for you? Wow, 2020 was has was was a year of of expedient growth. Mm -hmm. um, a year where um, you know certain certain events happened that led to a no matter what kind of growth, a no matter what kind of stepping up, a no matter what kind of walking into and and really clinging and cleaving onto the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And so with that, um, faith uh, grew. Uh, and, and, and that faith growing, uh, you know, my, my ear grew to hear, yes. to hear him. Yes. Yes. To hear him speak mm -hmm. and, and, and to act on it. Yes. So Tiffany was a part of a phone call that I sent out, man, I don't know how many email messages on that and just said, Hey, you guys, if you want to get together and talk about, um, what's happening each week, God just wanted um, a, a venue, an avenue for people to be able to s say, hey, you know what, I'm, mm. I'm not doing real good this week, or I had, a, I had a challenging week, or I had a great week, you know, just to connect with people so that we didn't get lost in this pandemic. Mm. And Tiffany one, was one of the people that would get on Saturday morning, 7 a.m., and the rule was you could come on with your rollers, you can come on in your robe, whatever you needed, yes. just get on the call and, and be on there. And one of the things that Tiffany wanted was to have that time before the day began, mm -hmm. she began to cultivate her relationship with God. Yes. Tell us how that happened. Oh, wow. I mean, so one, let's just be clear here. I was not up at seven on time every Saturday, okay? All right, let's just let's just be clear on that. I would get on groggy voice, phone on mute, brushing my teeth at 7.30, right? But, but it happened, uh, um, you know, each week, week after week, Saturday after Saturday, I started to get up earlier. I started to say, okay, let me push through, even through a late night, saying, well, this, mm -hmm. this is what God is calling and pulling, because when, when you do these things to sacrifice and hear and wake up and, mm -hmm. and, and tune in and meditate, then you can plan your day and your week with him first, yes, right? Yes. And so that is what, it happened, it happened. And so now, these past, gosh, two, two and a half, three months, it's, it's something that I have to do. Yes. I have to do. Yes. Uh, it's not like, oh, well, let me go ahead and do it. It's like, okay, I, I wake up, my feet turn over, and I'm like my grandma. Thank you, Lord, and I'm in it, right? <laughs> you know, and so that happened. And, and so with that, now my ear is tuned mm -hmm. in a way that I would have never imagined. Mm -hmm. I would have never imagined. And what did that tuned ear Woo! lead you to? <laughs> You want to hear? You want to know? Yes, let me tell you. Let me yes, tell you something. Yes. So, so I heard um, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, someone's looking for you. And I was like, what does that mean? What, what, what? And, and I started looking through my, in, my, my emails. I said, well, maybe I don't know how they're going to find me. I don't know what that means. And so, I, and then I said, well, let me just, I looked at every venue of communication possible. Mm -hmm. Text no, what messages. Did, what did the Holy Spirit say again? Someone's looking for you. Someone's looking for you. My Someone's goodness. looking for you. This was my second time in life he hearing that. You know, first time I was, oh, something told me someone's looking for me. Mm -hmm. But now I know it's not a something. It's a you someone. It. It's the Holy Spirit. It. Yes. So now I know it. And so I said, okay, someone's looking for me. So I, I looked and I looked and I looked in the emails. I looked in my Facebook Messenger. And then I looked in LinkedIn. And in LinkedIn, I got a message from a staffing corporation, a healthcare staffing corporation that said, hey, here's an opportunity. Do you know someone who is interested? I said, do I know her? <laughs> do I know her? I know her very well. Very well. <laughs> and so I called the young lady, and I went through from August up until uh, December 4th. Um, a series and a process of interviews and um, being just 
fine-tuned by this recruiting organization that then led to an ultimate offer wow. in a position to serve as an executive uh, for an entity in Rhode Island. Rhode Island. <laughs> So, um, so I'm telling you, it's just been phenomenal, this journey from August up until now. So December 4th, uh, I, saw, I signed an offer to serve as the president and chief, chief, <laughs> chief operating officer for the Providence Center. What? Oh, yes. Yes. And the, yes. And the Providence Center is the largest community-based mental health care organization in Rhode Island, serving over wow. 18,000 wow. families, wow. staffing about 900 employees. I mean, guys, and this is a part of a, a whole hospital system, Care New England, wow. where there's five hospital systems, seven hospital systems, and on the verge of a merger. So to my come in right now, Lord. oh, my God. Oh my, my God. God. Mm. Wow. And I believe mm. it started with you making that sacrifice to get up early uh. because now you can Ooh. hear what they need. Yes. Mm. Now you can yes. be led by the spirit yes. for the largest yes. mental health organization oh in God. the state of Rhode Island. Yes. Oh from South Carolina, South Carolina to Rhode Island. <laughs> yes. From from fresh mm. entrepreneur Ooh, yes. deciding mm. um, what to do with the money this month and yes. this month and this and month. praying that payroll will be made and, pay, and, and, it, and it never missed a beat. Let's yes. just say that. Yes, Let's yes, yes, say that. that's Every right. Was paid. Let's that's just right, say that. that's right. right. And so just grateful, just, I'm just honored. I'm so yes. humble, I'm, I'm, wow. Yes, but, but going from beginnings. Yes beginnings i mean so so people say grassroots yeah this wasn't even grassroots this was like uh a sand yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know but really, it was beautiful yes. oh. and and it was so beautiful that what did god do with what he started here through oh, uts so uts now has the opportunity to not only stay and thrive but and what to is uts uh, Universal Therapeutic Services is a mental health care organization uh, that I'm so honored and humbled to have started back in 2018. Yes. Back in 20, so three years old now. Um, yeah, yeah, so 27, 2018. So three years old now, UTS, Universal Therapeutic Services, has served over 500 families. We have 16 therapists, and we wow. now have a chief operating officer uh, that's going to continue the charge. Yeah. It's going to continue to make sure that people here in the upstate and in the state of South Carolina get optimal quality mental health care services that are that are centered and, and based on the foundations of the kingdom. Praise God. Yeah. So just honored, just humble, just yes. grateful that, that, that what God has started is going to continue. It's not going to fold. That's it's right. It's not going to shut down. That's right. But it's going to expand, you know, yes. in ways I would have never imagined. Yes. And that's what I want to say to you. I wanted to absolutely bring out UTS because God may have begun something in you and you feel this pull to do something else. It's not always necessary to stop what you're doing now yes. in order to do something else. Yes. Sometimes you'll hear people preach that. They'll mm -hmm. say, oh, you got to deal with what you got yeah. in this hand before yeah. God will put something in yeah. this hand. Sometimes God will load both hands. Come on. Come on. He'll load both hands. Yes. And if we keep our eye and our focus on him, keep our ear tuned to him in the morning for our marching assignment, for our, our, our marching orders and to know what our assignments are for the day, we are well able to take the whole land. Yeah. He said, I'll give, he said, ask me and I'll give you the nations. Yes, My God, I want to encourage you, every entrepreneur out there, I want to encourage you. Yes. Know that when, when, when Tiff heard um, someone's looking for you, they were looking because the Holy Spirit sent them mm. on the search. Mm, and I believe that he's doing the same oh. in our lives. Yes. And we just have to be ready for that. Will you yes. please speak to that person? Oh, my Lord. I just want to let you know that whatever that thing is that God started in you, whatever that word mm -hmm. that, he's, that he's put into your belly, allow that thing to grow and be born into fruition. Because whatever that thing that he has called you to do, it will surely come. Mm. It will surely come. And to rely on Ephesians 3.20, mm -hmm. that exceedingly and abundantly, 
whatever you ask or think according to according to the things that are inside of you mm. the mm -hmm. power that's what's in, that's what's inside of you mm -hmm. he'll pull that thing out mm -hmm. he'll make it happen so but you got to do something you got to think it you got to ask it and you got to activate that power let mm -hmm. god activate that power in you so that he can mm -hmm. pull forth your greatest purpose mm -hmm. to this earth for the kingdom of god Mm -hmm. Don't grow weary. Don't grow tired. Keep at the plow. Stay on your knees. My jeans got a hole because I stayed on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on your knees. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, no man can be against you when God is for you. Amen. No man. No man. Amen. Nothing. It doesn't even Amen. matter. Yes. It doesn't matter. Yes. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And don't try to judge your future by your past. Oh, what? Oh my God! Come on now, let's not oh. even. That's a whole nother <laughs> set talking about. You gotta that. come back to South Carolina. And, you know it. And talk about what God is, is doing is in home. Rhode Island. Yeah. This is home. This is home. You told me about Johnny Appleseed, mm. right? Mm. My God, we oh my were God. waiting for that word. Yes, we, you know. And so we we planted seeds in in Myrtle Beach. We plant seeds here in Greenville. We have two babies that were born here in Greenville. Yes, you know. David and now, and Michael. Yes, David Michael, and now we're gonna go plant seeds in Rhode Island, but this is forever home. Yes, you and your yes. boo. And me and my boo, child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we would love to give you. This is the Parker Family Road Trip oh, oh. Fun Bag, <laughs> and it's Maybe full of things to keep the babies um, active and and quiet and oh. fun and <laughs> learning. And man, we had so many games that we would play during our road trips with our grandparents. Yes. And so I just pray that something really wonderful comes out of this bag, that really great things happen mm. from this bag and your time together, that when the boys grow up, they'll say, you remember when we ro drove to Rhode Island and we played that game where we made those pictures. Yes. And we have mm. just beautiful memories for you in that Thank bag. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so oh. much. Thank you so much. You know I want to hug you. <laughs> I know I can't. I know it. Because of COVID-19. But, yes. you know, and we, and we pray against that. That's right. Mm. So yes. please join us yes. in celebrating Clarence and Tiffany, or Twinkle, as I call her, <laughs> and David and Michael mm. Parker. My goodness. Thank you. Oh, love y'all. <laughs> well, we have had an amazing time this first yes. Sunday in the new year. Uh, our next guest, they're not strangers. I have known uh, Angie, uh, Dr. Angie. Dr. I'm Angie. still going to call her Angie. <laughs> you know, but, uh, in front of people, I'll say doctor, but I've known her since she was a little girl with pigtails. And uh, oh. I've been able to watch her grow and become just an... Uh, wow just a pillar in the community as well as the church. And uh, I think about four years ago, if I'm correct, um, we had the awesome privilege of marrying. Yes! Seven. Have it been seven? It'd be seven, seven in April. April. Whoa. Whoa, time flies. Wow. Seven. Ah. So, wow. Right after we started the church, we, we performed amazing. It was a beautiful wedding too. It was. Oh my yes. goodness. You remember how Zim like cried all his makeup off? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the story he behind saw it. Her and oh my goodness. <laughs> seven Beautiful years. That's seven hard to years. believe. Wow. Amazing. Well, God has done amazing things in seven years, man. And one thing I can say is I have watched with my own eyes, as the Bible says, I'm an eyewitness to see the love that God has birthed in the two of you. Yes. And in your marriage, it's been beautiful. It's been really beautiful. And so I just wanna commend you on that. You. That doesn't just happen. Um, and I don't even wanna say it's work, cause it's not work. Mm -hmm. It is attention. Mm -hmm. You give one another attention and you begin to grow in, in, in the things of love. So we have great examples. Oh, Thank sweet. You. Thank you. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Um, so looking at these amazing things that God has done in 2020, and these are just the ones that we know about. Yes. As Pastor Hasker said, if 
we don't know about it, please reach out to us. We want to know. We want to celebrate you. Put it in the comment. But yeah, absolutely. We want to celebrate you. We want to support your business. I tell you, I've already bought some clothes from Nina. You probably don't know that, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> I need to check the account. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, please share with us what God has done in your life in 2020 as well. So we're going to start, you, you heard Pastor Hasker say, Dr. Angie. So we are going to start with Dr. Angie and that journey and how God created that in her life. And then we're going to talk about how Zim used to be um, in an insurance um, company where he was working for someone else. And then God brought him out during this pandemic to begin to establish his own legacy in insurance and what God was teaching him and showing him and the gift that he was using to reach people and to help people God was bringing into the kingdom for the Moton household as a, as a foundation stone. So anyway, I don't want to get into his testimony. Um, I want to give him that chance. But Dr. Angie, my goodness, tell us it's not easy to get a doctorate. So hats off to you, and please share your story with us. You all, let's welcome them. Amen. Well, thank you so much, and we love you guys um, so much. And it's an you. honor to, um, you know, share anything that anybody does at TEC. Yeah. Anybody in the community, everybody knows y'all. Yeah. So <laughs> um, the, what I love is that you guys celebrate everybody. It's yes. just not you don't pick and choose. Amen. You you sell Amen. if you know about it, you celebrate. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. Um, so I want to just celebrate you guys for being our pastors and being, you know, I call y'all my second parents. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so, we are honored. And if honored. I can't get them, I call y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um and we have truly missed you and everybody else Amen. Um, yes. during this pandemic. But Amen. nevertheless, thank you for allowing me to share my story and it's kind of been, I haven't really said anything about it. Right. And the only reason why the world really knows is because of Zim. Zim shared a post. Oh. Um, and when I graduated. And I really didn't know that I was actually going to graduate. Because I've been on this journey for, before we got married. So when, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. right before we got married, I had started, I had about 30 uh, hours towards my PhD and after getting married that was the ministry and studying all of its own yes. and so I was just like <laughs> I can't do it and many of you may know um, my mother um, is the founder of a Bible college here in Greenville and um, she was like you got to keep going you got to keep going and I was just like no I'm really tired well, tell us the name of that college it is yeah. higher ground Christian development Bible College and Seminary um, right here in Greenville Amen. So Dr. Muriel Anderson um, is the founder of that and um, and and a lot of times people think that she gives me things oh it's probably that, harder <laughs> on you and that was another reason why I was just like mm, you know, people just think that she gets me, but she, I think she is really, really hard on me. Absolutely. And so Tom had went on, Tom had went on, and I was just like, no, no, no. So what she actually did was, and many people don't know, but I've I've been her bookkeeper, I've been her administrator, I've been da 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 da, -da for her for almost eleven years before wow. I had even started my journey wow. uh, with my second master's that I received from, from the Bible college in counseling. Um, wow. and so I really didn't say anything. She hadn't said anything. So what she did was, uh, took everything that I've helped her with over the last 11 years mm -hmm. and turned it into as a project because with the, our covering up under, um, for the Bible college, you can either do a dissertation or you can do a project. Yeah. And so she said that it was immediately accepted. God. immediately and so I have my PhD in organizational leadership uh, which I do have a strength in administration and mm -hmm. things of that nature we have we train our professors so I started out as just a coordinator and then I moved up as a dean of um, academics 
and now, um, you know, uh, I'm still the dean of, of academics in the admissions office, but we just uh, hired on two two more deans. Yeah, so it's my job to train them, train the teachers, and all that good stuff. And so I was able to. When it, it was actually when I thought that God had just, you know, forgot about me. Mm. And I do, wow. I do have those moments that mm. wow. I really, if I'm really honest with you, I, right. I have those moments where God has forgotten about me. And it's not about recognition. It's just about, you know, oh, I just can't do this anymore. I'm just so tired. Where's the, where's my energy? And we were celebrating this past class and um, mm. she had, she definitely surprised me. And um, she was telling me, you know, that she had turned everything in on my behalf. And they just celebrated me with my cap and my gown. Let us see. Yes, please. Let us see. Yes. <laughs> my goodness. Wow. Yes. Can you put it on for us? <laughs> yes, please, please. Oh, my goodness. Zim, you're working on a project right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you don't get credit for that. <laughs> wow. Come on, let's go ahead and like. And I'm telling you, let me see those hearts go across. This is beautiful. <laughs> yes. Wow. definitely convicted from someone who was saying why haven't you told anybody because I want my daughter that looks like you to oh. be proud of all of her accomplishments and not hide it and it it convicted me so bad like you know God was with me every step of the way he blessed me um in spite of it really has been a journey in itself this year and uh, it was just amazing. And I have an amazing mother. Yes. And I say all the time, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So it doesn't matter how he gets you there. Uh, be present in the moment. Praise him in advance. Mm -hmm. and praise him for the things that you don't even know he's doing. Yes. When you can't trace him, trust him. Yes, so, yes. I love that. Yes. I love even also that while you were helping your mom, man, you yeah. were building your PhD, not even knowing. Not God knowing. will use every part of your life to get you to your next level. Just don't stop doing what he's called you to do in yes. the moment, right. Yes. right? Right. Man, a lot of people quit because they don't get where they want to be when they want to be there. Right. But God has an absolute timeline and a plan for your life. So, And I love beautiful. it when the, the song that Marvin Sapp sings, he saw the best in me. Yes. Yeah. He not only sees the best in you, but he allows people around you that knows your story, knows your challenges. So good. It, they see the best in you. Mm. Yeah. And, and we are charged to help each other, to help our brothers and sisters to see the best in them. Yeah. And pull everything that's, that God has already placed inside of them to help pull it out and be the best that you can be. Yes. 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 So beautiful. So beautiful. Tell us about the best of this young man next to you. <laughs> I won't interrupt much, but I do have. I'm going to let him start, but I will interject some because I, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, babe. Tell them. Tell the world. <laughs> um, well, again, thank you guys for um, inviting us to share our story. Um, so the last four years, I worked for um, a property and casualty insurance company in Greenville. Um, I won't say their name, but last right. four years, and um, when I started, it was um, it was a great great job, great opportunity. Um, you know, it was you know the spiel they give you when you interview. You know, mm -hmm. climb the corporate ladder. And so when I started there, I loved it. I told her, I said, I don't know if I'm ever going anywhere else. But you know how it is. Three years later, leadership change and morale taint. Everything changed, and so I no longer wanted to be there anymore. Um, 
I've all and so I've always wanted to sell life insurance, but I know that's a commission only job, and um, I was afraid to, <laughs> for, you know, present that to her. Um, but as time grew on, and I began to pray about it, I used Amen. to, and it's funny how God prepares you for things while you're doing other things because I used to drive for Amazon Flex all the time just as a part-time job and I would listen to life insurance podcasts not knowing that that was going to be a career path I take Interesting. and I would listen I would listen and one day I was parked on the side of the road and I just started googling life insurance companies mm -hmm. and I would I said no that don't sound good that don't sound good that don't sound good and I saw one I said hmm family first life you know family First life, so I said, wow. that sounds interesting. So I called, I called, um, and I I found out later on. Usually you're recruited in, but I just I just called out the blue, um, said this is something that I'm interested in, and they asked me where I lived. I told them Greenville. Um, they paired me with someone in the area because I said you know I want to be paired with someone so I can learn the industry. Yeah. So that was in that was in February. So in March I made a decision that. Okay, I want to do this, not knowing what was around the corner. Um, so uh, I made a decision, and so I said, so I prayed. I said, how am I going to tell her? Because um, I had already made up my mind <laughs> that I was going to do it. Um, Let me stop I like here. That. Pastor, you, you taught him well, too, because he told me Valentine's Day weekend. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day weekend. He had did all this elaborate. Dying you, huh? I passed the test, and she didn't even know I was studying for it. Wow. God, yeah. why me? No, I didn't lie. I thought I just, you was going to work. Yeah, I was. <laughs> he was working. <laughs> working on the future. <laughs> so I've been doing that since March. It's 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 been a, a, a wonderful journey. I meet amazing people along the way. Mm -hmm. I've met people that I've been able to pray with. People have prayed for me. Mm -hmm. I've I've learned wonderful stories about people and about how they persevere through things. And I know that this is my calling. Yes. Um, you know, so when I get up every morning and leave, you know, it's not a it's not a drag, it's not a yes. it's not a struggle. Awesome. You know, it's 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 something that I know God put me here to do and that's serve the people. Praise I God. love it. Praise I God. love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. Wow. There's so many cans we want to open with the two of you. And we have got to have the two of you back. And yes. so to continue this conversation. Yes. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I love it. I love that even in this time, you just keep pushing forward, keep striving. And that really is the message. You know, one of the, the main things with Zim, he was unhappy in what he was doing. Oh, there's so much. He, because yeah. God had a place for him somewhere else. So yeah. how can known, you be I've happy? known people to stay in an unhappy position for 20 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be a, just a young man like yourself, newly married, and step out on faith like that. Yes. Brand new home. Yes. And funny story, too, <laughs> I don't know if it's still recorded, but when I told her, I had, I had talked to like three or four of my cousins. I said, this woman do, and I know she ain't going to go for it, and yada, yada, yada. And they was like, well, just do it. So I, <laughs> the Bible said, write your vision, made it plain. So I, I wrote down a financial list. I said, well, if this... We got six months for me to get good at it. You know, if it don't work, I'll find another job, you know, yada, yada, yada. And when I showed her, she immediately accepted it. So wow. I said, Absolutely. okay. So it was, you know, God had his She's hand on it. She's with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes, yes. you yes. have a praying wife. Yes. When we come back, we will, I'd like to tell you about the loss that happened right when he said yes to it. So. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. The well, timing of the Lord is sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, we have to. Go, but before we leave, tell us those that are listening that want to continue their spiritual education how to get in touch with the Bible College. Yeah, sure. Well, you can reach us at Higher Higher Ground Christian Development Bible College and Seminary. We're at 76 Allen Street. You can um, find us on the web at HGCD Bible College and Seminary dot uh, org. Um, or you can find me on Facebook, Angie Moten. Mm -hmm. um, inbox me and I can give you more information. Actually, classes start um, January the 9th. So if you want to come in and uh, find out more about us or just sit in the classes, you can do so.
And Zim, how can they find you if they need to get some insurance? And mentorship. I, I just yes. heard about mentorship. Wow. Know, so. Yeah. Um, we are, Strong. if you got a uh, love for people, you've got a sales background, we are, I'm definitely trying to grow my individual business within the business. So I am looking for people um, who want to serve the community. So Ooh. find me on Facebook, uh, Zimbless Moulton. Um, I am on Instagram, OZM Moulton. And um, yeah, let's connect. Yes, yes, amen, wonderful. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord for the Moulton. <laughs> Woo! Well, we are coming to a close. Don't you leave yet because we have an incredible uh, story and, and an encouraging one, for, especially for you parents who are raising babies and children. Mm -hmm. I've known our next, next guest um, since she was a little chubby baby. <laughs> uh, I've known her and her family for a long time. Just a wonderful family, just a, a family of just uh, honor and integrity. Yes. And she's also my attorney. And so uh, uh, we're excited to have her with us today. <laughs> I love it. And she also has a counterpart. Yes. Not oh, here. Yeah. A partner in crime. <laughs> yes. So we call them the dream team. <laughs> yeah, the dream team. Yes. Awesome, awesome. And um, they're beautiful parents, Billy and Arnitha McLean. Arnitha's been a prayer partner of mine for uh, a good 15 years. 15 years. I also had a Bible study at the house that met on Saturdays at seven in the morning as well. And that was, gosh, probably whew, 15, 16, 17 years ago. I don't remember, but we met for five years and Arnitha was one that would come. And so to be here to celebrate Shanda McLean and what God has done in her life in 2020 is a great joy for us, Yes. but it is absolutely no surprise. Um, her parents have bathed both of the girls in prayer, and so it's just beautiful to see them achieve all of the things that God has in store for them. And I know that it'll continue, so please join us in welcoming Shanda McLean Esquire. <laughs> Thank you. Like and comment. Yes. Ask us some questions. <laughs> yes. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, Thank my goodness. You. I cannot believe. Wow. <laughs> I mean, just coming home, I drove home Thursday. And I hadn't been home since August. I didn't even have my bar results the last time I was home. I didn't know where I would be wow. at this time this How year. How did that feel? It, I'm just so grateful. So grateful. And I tell my parents all the time, I, like, pinch myself when I go into work now oh. because I'm just like this time last year I really just did not know there was so much uncertainty and I was a nervous wreck I was and I, I did it God did it yeah and I am so thankful <laughs> so thankful so, tell us what God did yeah so well first I'll start back in March um COVID hit I was still in law school and I had already um done my bar application so I knew I'd be taking the bar in July but when COVID hit, everything changed. So mm. I was thinking I would be studying, you know, at my law school over the summer. I thought I was going to have a graduation. And in the blink of an eye, everything changed. Oh I, I didn't have a real graduation. And two weeks after I got my degree, it was mm -hmm. mailed. Um, I had to start studying for the bar. And it was a 10-week process. I studied for the bar alone at home Wow. for 10 weeks. Wow. And when I tell wow. you it Is that was normal? It, well, some people can study at home, but for me, it wasn't because I, I'm an outside studier. I need to be at Starbucks or in yeah. a library. I just... The yes. activity. Yes, I need some activity around. So that, for me, was just... It, it was rough. It was. And I think that was one of the toughest things that I have ever gone through. My parents will tell you they, they were worried about me. <laughs> 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 they were. And it was more so... Deep down, I know that I could do it, but I had just, I'd heard so much from other people saying how yes. difficult it was and how so many people don't pass the first time. And I had a, a job that was contingent on me passing. And I'm like, Lord, I, I need this. Wow. You know, it's not just to, oh, you know, you can take it later and it's okay. Like, no, God, like, I need you to move right now. Mm -hmm. And there were some days I just, I didn't feel motivated. You know, I had to dedicate almost all my day to studying. And I, I had to study every day, mm -hmm. 10 weeks straight. 
no break. So mm-hmm. it, it was it was tough, but God just he kept me. And yeah. I remember throughout the process, I wrote scriptures all over my apartment. Ooh. And when not even when times got to, I didn't have a choice but to look at them. They were in front of me. They were in my wow. bathroom. They were in my kitchen. Awesome. My bedroom everywhere, Ooh. and I relied on that and in prayer. Mm-hmm. I prayed more than I probably ever have prayed in my life, and I cried more than I have ever cried yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> but now I I realize that it was all worth it, and wow, this is truly one of my greatest accomplishments, and I am so happy, <laughs> so happy. <laughs> and I remember, wow. um, I went through all that and. August I don't it was the last week in August um normally they mail bar results in Mm -hmm. so I was you know waiting and they were my bar results were going to come to South Carolina Mm -hmm. so I was waiting for my parents to call me but I got a a text from my best friend she said hey um they're going to release our bar results online I was like oh okay oh so um I got an email and it said you had a new you know document to review and I said oh lord this is it and I prayed and I said God let your will be done I know that I have done all that I can do, mm-hmm. and I'm relying on you, so I know that I'm going to be fine. And I, oh, I checked that um, email, and it said, "Congratulations!" <laughs> I just started screaming in the apartment <laughs> and crying. I was just like, I just could not believe it. And I was like, God, like I don't know why, I don't know how, because I know how I felt during that exam and in that room. Right. But you moved, and I am grateful. I am so grateful. Wow. I love it. I love it. And you you found out there was more in you than yes. you knew. Yes, most definitely. And, and more so, you know, we do walk by faith and not by sight. And there was so much going on around me that would make me feel like I couldn't do it. And, like, it was nearly impossible. And I remember sitting in, um, when you take the bar, you sit in, like, this huge, it's almost like a warehouse. And there was, in all, I think there were 700 of us. Wow. Taking sitting for the bar. Wow. During a pandemic. Right. With with mask on. And it was that alone was was terrifying to me. Yes. But I, I got in there and I prayed and I said, God, you did not bring me this far to leave me. Come on now. I have studied for these ten weeks. Come I'm on. gonna do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> here yes. We are. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I just heard um another testimony from someone who had, um, it was an NFL player that had some, some injuries. Mm-hmm. And he had, then he had a positive COVID test mm-hmm. and he had really bad symptoms mm-hmm. and um, just looked like his life was going to take a hard mm-hmm. turn into a direction he didn't want. Mm-hmm. And his wife, he said his wife sent him a text and it said, you didn't come this far to, yes. to yes. get this far. That's yes. right. You know, That's exactly and right. the way she worded that, you didn't do all of that studying just to do that studying. Right. You know, you did that so that you could pass that bar and be available mm-hmm. for God in the, the law yes. in industry or judicial industry, whichever. I don't know what your what your direction is going to be, but mm-hmm. he's going to use you mightily yes. because you did it. Just you and him. Mm-hmm. You didn't have your Starbucks setting. You didn't have your friends. Mm-hmm. You had your books your sticky note scriptures, Mm -hmm. and God. That's right. My Lord, this scripture came to mind when you were speaking. Mm -hmm. It's from Luke 145, and this is absolutely for you. Mm -hmm. It says, blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Wow. Yes. (laughs) How did you think, I want to be an attorney. How did that come? You know, I don't really remember what age, but I knew I didn't want to be a doctor. I said, you know, me, I get kind of queasy with blood and sickness. And <laughs> I, I'm a germaphobe. So I was like, you know, that that's not it. And I was like, you know, supermodel sounds fun, too. And then one day um, I was talking to my dad, I believe. And throughout my life, especially as a child, I was always helping people. Mm-hmm. Um, through something. I had my own problems, but people would always come to me about things. And I was like, can I do this for a living? And I was like, one of the greatest ways that I can help people is to be a lawyer because that is what I do. I'm a counselor. I counsel people. I help them out of situations they can't get out of themselves. That's beautiful. So that is, that's how it came about. Wow. I love it. So how can people get in touch with you? And I want you to look into the camera and just encourage somebody to get through Man, they might feel like they have a mountain that is just too too much for them to to do. How can they 
dig in and get that yes. inner strength from the Lord. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So. Okay. So first, um, my contact information. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, my it's my first and last name, Shanda McLean, and also. Um, I practice law in North Carolina, but I'm able to refer you to other firms in South Carolina until I um, transfer my score here. So um, my business um, website is satlawnc.com, and it's S-A-T-T-L-A-W.com. And um, just words of encouragement, me personally, it took me really looking to God first and then just mm-hmm. telling myself, like, why can't you do this? Your story is not someone else's story. Just because mm. someone else oh, didn't right. pass the bar the first time doesn't mean you can't pass the bar. You are here for a reason, for such a time as this. Wow. Th- this is your time. So just walk in it. Whatever it is that you're feeling, whatever negative feelings, what, no matter what your past looks like, mm-hmm. you can do this. And God loves you no matter what you've done, yes. no matter what you're yes. going to do in the future. God still loves you. Yes. And you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to. That's one last, <clears throat> one last question. What type of influence did your parents have uh, in you deciding what you wanted as a career? Yeah, so my parents were very, very influential, um, no, the most influential. Um, they, they told us, they were like, listen, neither of us, you know, um, finished college or went to college. So, but that's not going to be your story. You're going to go. Now, what you do with it is your choice, but you're going to do something. So, it started out, you know, with me going to undergrad. And even at that point, I knew I wanted to go to law school. Mm-hmm. But once I started and once I told them that, that, that was it. They were I was on it. To that thing. <laughs> so, and I know there were many times, you know, I wanted to give up. But they just stayed on me and they said, Shanda, you can do this. Keep going. It's going to be okay. Yes. That's what it was. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow. Yep. And we just put some hearts across that screen, <laughs> some likes. Yes. Uh, incredible, incredible. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes, let's give God um, thanks for Shanda McLean Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for just just hanging in there with us this morning uh, as we kicked off the first service of the year with some incredible uh, speakers, incredible testimonies. I hope you just heard one that would just encourage you and push you to what God has has called you to do. Uh, The mission of this church is to discover, develop, and deploy. And as you can see, and as you have heard from many that spoke this morning, they are doing what God has called them to do, even by faith. A few of them have stepped out by faith. Uh, And so um, this year, let your story be great. Let your testimony at the end of 2021 be as great as what we heard this morning. Amen. I agree. Have a great, great, great 2021 from the Equipping Center.